This week, Ed Scotus, president of the SANS Technology Institute and director of the Holiday Hack Challenge, will talk about, of course, this year's Holiday Hack Challenge. Sinan Aaron, VP of Zero Trust Access at ZTNA Engineering at Barracuda Networks, joins us for a segment walking us through what we can expect for 2022 for security. In the security news, printing shells. The exploit is in the link. 42 CVEs. Time to update all of your browsers again. Microsoft app spoof spoofing vulnerability, stealing credit cards in WordPress, using blockchain for C2, manage engine zero day. And oh, did you hear about this new vulnerability, the log4j vulnerability? We'll, we'll fill you in when we get to the news. All that and more on this episode of Paul's Security Weekly. This is Security Weekly for security professionals by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails flow steady. It's Paul's Security Weekly. Qualys has brought together vulnerability management and patch management, letting security teams discover vulnerabilities and apply patches immediately, all within a single unified app. Sign up for a free trial of Qualys VMDR, Vulnerability Management, Detection, and Response today at securityweekly.com forward slash Qualys. And welcome to the show. But first, let me introduce you to a man who, like a bad skid mark, is undeterred, Mr. Paul Asadorian. Oh, welcome everyone to Paul's Security Weekly. It's episode number 721, recorded on December 15th, 2021, right here in G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island. Uh, to my left... None other than Mr. Larry Pesce oh. is here with us. Yeah, off to your left, right? Your other left. My other left. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. What's going yeah. on, Larry? Oh, same old. It feels like it's been forever since I've been in studio. I know, but it was probably last. It was last week. Last week. week. No, no, because no, we there were was off. no show last week. That's and I think why. The, and the week before I had some other commitment. Yes, I was. Te I was teaching. It's good to to have you here yeah. on the show and here in studio on the lines remotely. Mr. Josh Morpet is with us. Josh, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely happy to be here as always, although using my travel rig this week because my main computer is down from that. What was that? Um, 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 log, wood log wood for, for log, Josh or log something? For I don't something. know. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Lee Neely is here with us. Lee, welcome. Ah, good to be here. Ready? Can't believe it's already time for talking to Ed about the, the Holiday Hack Challenge. Good to be back since it's been a few weeks. I mean, we've been to, we've been to Egypt. We've been to uh, Disneyland, and we even took a class from Larry, which was sapping my brain last week. I'm glad <laughs> I didn't try and do the show. Fantastic. Quick announcement before we get started. In an overabundance of caution, we've decided to flip this year's Security Weekly Unlocked into a virtual format. The safety of our listeners and hosts is our number one priority. We miss seeing you all in person, but we hope we can still you can still join us for Security Weekly Unlocked Virtual. The event will take place Thursday, December 16th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can register for free at securityweekly.com forward slash unlocked. Also, make sure you stay tuned next year as it's interesting how things work out, but uh, those that did not get to present on the virtual edition of Security Weekly Unlocked uh, are going to be presenting next year virtually for us in an all-new series, and nice. we'll keep you updated. Uh, hopefully next week I should have a little more of a schedule for you to announce, which I think you're really going to like. Joining us for this segment, no stranger to the show, Mr. Ed Scotus is here with us. Ed, welcome to Paul Security Weekly. Hey. Hey, thank you, thank you. It's great to see you all again. Super <clears throat> excited to be here. I, I love the show. It's it's my favorite. It really is. We love you too, Ed. Uh, I oh, think yeah. also congratulations are in order. As you are now, make sure I get this right, president of the SANS Technology Institute. Is that correct? That's right. It's the SANS College, sans.edu. Uh, I, uh, I took the position September 1st, and I'm really loving it. It's um, uh, It started out as a um, master's degree uh, offering. And we now do undergraduate as well, so you can get your bachelor's degree uh, by taking SANS classes and doing additional projects and, and working with other students. Really exciting. We have 1,200 students in the college. That's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. Ed. Yeah. So what, what do you do as what do you do as president? I'm just curious. Like what are your so, responsibilities? Uh, it's, it's interesting. So as president, you know, I interact with you know other institutions that we have partnerships with, other mm -hmm. colleges and stuff like that. Um, I, I talk with people about the great stuff the college is doing. And also, as it was explained to me uh, by Alan Paller, 
uh, who is the uh, the previous president, he said, your job is to look at everything the college does and say, say I'm not sure that's right. Should we be doing it that way or can we do it better? Um, so nudger in chief, I, I think some people call that. Mm. Um, but it's been fun. And um, I, my favorite part is working with the students. Um, it, it's just they're, they're so excited. They're so bright. They have such great ideas. We publish a research journal that comes out once a year. Um, I mean, it's it's fully accredited, real deal college experience. You know, other colleges are coming around to sort of the virtual online stuff. Mm. Uh, Sands.edu has been doing that for you know about 15 years now. So uh, it, it's really an honor and I am loving it. I'm really enjoying it. Fantastic. Also, we're very excited about the uh, Holiday Hack Challenge this year. Yeah. Oh, also, Sorry. before we get to that, though, Ed, you mentioned Alan Paller. And I just, again, yeah. I want to honor such a great person, a, a great person in general, and a huge contributor to our field. Um, and Indeed. Alan passed away this year. So very sad news. But I, Alan was just so awesome in so many ways. We we miss him greatly. He was an incredible man. He really, you know, as Steve Jobs would say, he put a dent in the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, he started so many different things in our industry. Um, obviously, the Sands Institute was something he, he started, mm. but also the Center for Internet Security and a lot of the, um, you know, the, the interactions that you see between government and the private sector uh, to kind of open up the sharing of information <laughs> and such. He pushed so hard for that mm. and achieved such great things. But but even beyond all of his ideas and, and the things that he created um, in the industry, he really uh, worked with people. That was the mm -hmm. thing. He would he was a people person. Um, you know, he met many of us. I know he was on the show uh, and he, I thought he did yeah. a great job on the show. I, I had I worked with ago. Alan a little bit and then I got the opportunity to introduce him at a CCDC <laughs> event and kind of pay homage and thank him for everything that he did for my career and keep me involved with sands and like you say the people person he was so nice to everyone it yeah, didn't matter if you're a sand student your first time sands or whether you were a fellow and didn't matter he treated everyone the same way i felt like he really did and we all learned so much from him in in just sort of you know savoring and enjoying life but also investing time and money and thoughtfulness in in other people mm. um to to help them achieve more uplifting people mm. So, so yeah, you know, he, he was in many ways like a father to me and, um, you know, we definitely, I'm glad that, that you, you brought this up and that we're honoring him. Thank you. And I mean, very much in his spirit and lifting people up and giving people opportunities. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why you created the holiday hack challenge free for everyone Absolutely. and encourage the community to participate in it. So absolutely it's it's all about community it's you know it's our gift to the uh the cybersecurity community uh we've done 18 of them so far oh, i think this one is our best one ever a uh, lot of fun cool stuff in in this year's holiday hack challenge that's awesome give us a preview come on give us a preview all tell right. us what's going to so happen ready? okay yes, all yes. Right. so set it up so for us first off what is the holiday hack challenge i imagine most of of your listeners mm -hmm. uh and viewers know but for those that don't know holiday hack challenge is well it's a hacking challenge but not just offense it's got defense it's got digital forensics it's the whole gamut of cybersecurity technologies with really high quality challenges that you can solve and they're across the gamut of difficulty levels there's stuff that's really easy little kids play this stuff i mean kids as young as five or seven years old and then there's some really advanced stuff that some of the best cybersecurity practitioners in the world grapple with. And all oh God, very practical. Well, you can use 12 year olds if you want. So, <laughs> sure. It's so, so it's, it's, the it's the challenge. But in addition to the challenge, it's full of hints. And there's also this virtual world that you can hop around. You get a little avatar. And there's a social aspect of it because you can interact with other players. You can interact with Santa Claus and the elves. There's also a soundtrack. So every year we. We commission oh a new album of music, and I think this is our best album it, ever. You are you are you are correct, Ed. You know, I I was in the game and listening to some of the the music, and oh my word, like I actually like had some other work to do, so I left it going in the background. Thank you. And Thank it, you. Oh my god, it's amazing this year. It, it's it's I got to give the credit to the musicians. <clears throat> uh, Ninjala is awesome. Uh, there's also some tracks in there by Josh Scotus, uh, my son. I love Winter Snow. He did that one. He also did a, a rendition of Goody Two Shoes. Uh, some of you might remember that song from Adam Ant back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, don't cry, don't pout, what do you do? Um, also, uh, Ninjala, did you hear the song on the second floor of Frost Tower? 
um, called All Your Christmas Are Belong to Us. Oh, that's awesome. I did oh, hear it, but I apparently wasn't listening that well. <laughs> yeah, we... All Your Christmas Are Belong to Us. You can get the entire album for free. It'll be on streaming services in a couple of days because it takes a few days to get that uploaded. Sure. But you can get the album at sans.org slash holiday hack. All the, the whole album's there. It's 10 songs available free for download. We give that away. So it's it's got an album to it. It also has a quirky storyline. This year, Jack Frost is back. Last year, he tried to defeat Santa Claus and take over the holiday season. This year, Jack Frost got off on a technicality. So the, the legal system at the North Pole is very complicated. So Jack is free, not in prison. And he bought up all the land next to Santa's castle, and he built a giant tower there. It's called Frost Tower. And if you look at how Jack speaks, it might sound a little familiar. I don't know if you noticed that one, Larry, but um, Jack talks about how this is the, the tallest tower in the entire world at the North Pole. And um, he invites you to come in and it's a casino uh, when you get inside and you can uh, hack into the uh, slot machines and such. Um, you also find out that Jack, instead of having elves, has trolls and uh, you have to contend with Jack, figure out what he's up to and thwart his evil vision for the holidays. And when you get to the end, you'll learn the origin story of Jack Frost. You'll find out where he really comes from. Mm. So it's all of that. That's the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. And uh, one of my other favorite songs this year, is, it's by Ninja. It's called Viva Frost Vegas. <laughs> and it plays, of course, in the casino. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, mm. So much fun. So, Ed, we, we talk about this, like, virtual world and the... Yeah video game kind of aspect to it how do the the actual like hacking challenges work its way into it because i think so oftentimes you describe yep. it if someone hasn't played they might be like well wh when do i get to a command prompt and actually like get to do stuff oh. so so you you get a little badge when you get into the conference so your avatar has a badge right on its chest this year it looks like a little gift and when you click on that inside there are objectives and those objectives are essentially the challenges you have to solve some of the challenges, the objectives are in the badge itself. So you click mm -hmm. on things and you can open up command lines in the badge. Others will have you hop over to a terminal or other device in the game itself. And then you click on that terminal and a command prompt comes up mm -hmm. or a web interface comes up or something like that. So you hop around in game and interact with this stuff in the badge, solving the challenges. Now, some challenges, when you solve them, um, it automatically registers. For others, you have to answer a question associated with the challenge. Mm -hmm. There are hints for all of the challenges as well. Now, for the hints, you get those from the elves. So you hop over to an elf mm -hmm. or a troll, and you click on them, and they start giving you hints. Now, sometimes you have to help an elf or a troll solve a little challenge. We call these our terminal challenges. A terminal challenge usually takes 5 or 10 or 15 minutes. When you solve the terminal challenge for an elf or a troll, they give you hints and that helps you solve the main challenges. Oh, um, but, interesting. You know, some people view this as, as like a, a capture the flag event, which it is. Mm -hmm. Some people view it as a cyber range, which it is. But but we really kind of view it as a learning platform. You, I mean, you can mm -hmm. really learn a lot from this. And it's just fun, social interaction for the holidays. I know everybody's kind of stressed out and freaked out from that whole, uh, what did Josh call it? Uh, wood for, I heard what you're talking about, Josh, up there. Um, so <laughs> Wood for J. But, wood, wood for yeah, Josh. Log, log for J, log forge, whatever you want to call it. Um, people are stressed by that. But, you know, to spend 15 minutes or a half hour hopping around Holiday Hack, it'll give you a smile. Um, I, I hope you have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, you know, because that's that's what we do this for. Now, Ed, if, we, if there's it, a yeah. tower in the game, does Hans Gruber fall from said tower? <laughs> we did that in 2018. 2018 he did. Okay. He did. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it had the theme of Die Hard. You go to Santa's Castle, and there is a Hans Gruber in Santa's Castle. Mm -hmm. And the 2018 challenge is still up, by the way, if you want yeah. to play Die Hard, you know, holiday version with Holiday Hack. But the 2021 version, there is the tower, and it's Frost Tower, and it might look kind of familiar. Um, and you can you can hop around inside. The coolest part of it is the gift shop. <laughs> because it pops up when you least expect it. It's just a gift shop, and it does have Frostfest swag. Um, and then, and there are talks at Frostfest, as there are talks at KringleCon. So that's another thing that Holiday Hack Challenge is. It's it's a conference, a virtual conference at the North Pole, where you can see videos of various talks. Now the talks are all on a loop, and they're actually in YouTube. But you can hop into a room, watch a talk there. You can watch talks in your badge, or you can just go to YouTube and watch the talks. So there's KringleCon talks. And there's Frostfest talk. So, so Jack Frost has this competing conference at the North Pole, a competing building at the North Pole, 
And honestly, he's trying to steal the holiday season away from Santa Claus. And so it happens. So so and on these terminal challenges, they're done on uh, a cranberry pie. Did you guys yes. up, did you guys upgrade to the new cranberry pie four yet, or are you still? Yes, they're, they're, they're cranberry pie fours. Awesome. Uh, and if you look at them hard enough, they, they might look like Docker images running on uh, GCP. <laughs> um, <laughs> just saying, this just, is, just this saying. is quite a cranberry pie architecture yeah. here. <laughs> um, and we access them using a, a really neat technology called Weddy, which is Web TTY. And our Weddy terminals in the past years were based on an older form of Weddy. We upgraded it this year. We're getting much better performance mm -hmm. at much better cloud costs. Mm -hmm. And most important of all, much better stability. Um, so I think you're going to like the new terminal stuff that we have uh, inside the game. Yeah, I mean, again, that, was, that was a logical all, question, Ed, is how you get a terminal inside of a web browser. It sounds like you just answered yes. that, that question. So there's someone makes some Weddy. soft, is it Java, a combination of JavaScript and then something on the... The Docker instance, yes, yep, on both on both ends, and um, the, the team is also using um, Google Cloud load balancers, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. they, they swear by. They say they're the coolest thing. So you might have a particular uh, Docker instance that's not healthy <laughs> and such, and the Google load balancer will start directing load to another uh, a Docker image in the cloud uh, mm -hmm. just seamlessly. So knock on wood. You always got to be careful with saying yeah, something yeah, like yeah. this. But this year. Has been our most stable year ever from right out of the gate, um, and uh, we're we're really pleased with the the performance this year and such. And and we'd love more people to join us. Last year we ended up getting up to nineteen thousand people. Wow. We would like to we'd like to beat that. You know, it'd be nice to get above twenty thousand. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, there's this stupid log thing that poor J. Yeah. So I understand people got to work with that. That's that's totally cool. Also, last year, you know, there were still a lot of lockdowns going on. So I think that actually boosted our numbers last year because people had less time to, to go outside. So mm -hmm. they maybe they play holiday hack challenge. Yeah, so maybe, really maybe, not, maybe not traveling with family and, and those right. things. So. so it'll be interesting this year to see what happens with our numbers, just given how different the environment is last year. Now, last year, of course, we had solar winds drop. I think it was December 20th. So Log4j or Logforge, if you prefer, um, that came a couple weeks earlier this year. I, I do worry that there's another shoe to drop before the end of the year. Um, you know, they, they, they seem to bring these things up toward the end of the year. And, and uh, the Logforge thing or 4j uh, happened early enough that there's time for another ugly thing to hit oh, before the end of the year. Sorry to be a, like a prophet of doom, but it kind of feels like something might come up. Do you think ugly ugly things hit because they're looking for something juicy to latch on to while we're all on holiday? I think it might be. Um, you know, it, it could be that. It could just be the luck of the draw. It could be, um, you know, people are, you know, maybe they discover something early in the year and they just want to get it off their plate. <laughs> yeah, right? right. Yeah. That's interesting. So what else yeah. can you do inside the holiday? So you've, you've so let, it's, let's it's, talk about the like it's more. I think you're right. It is a learning platform. I've tried to, I think, yeah. put a label on it, and yeah, I'd never do it justice. And I think you did, Ed, with a learning platform because you've got music, you've got presentations and videos, you've got yeah. challenges, you've got the video game aspect, you've got the kind of puzzle uh, aspect yeah. as well. So there's a lot of the social aspect. Social, social, yeah. Aspect. And there's a social, yeah. So there's it, there's a lot of things in here. We're yeah, trying I mean, to catch the missing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. No, what, what I was, was going to say, say the only thing missing is like a direct electrical current to the pleasure center of the brain. Like, you know, <laughs> 2022, we're working on it. <laughs> oh, God. Larry, you got. Oh, God. Don't Larry. do <laughs> Larry's working on that for us. Um, no comment. So, no comment. <laughs> <clears throat> so, what we're, we're really inspired by, you know, the hacker conference scene. I mean, you know, they have really great stuff happens at ShmooCon or DefCon or, mm -hmm. you know, DerbyCon, rest in peace, or the various B-Sides conferences. We're kind of inspired by them to say, what can we do throwing a party, a virtual party at the North Pole to make people, you know, have some fun and, and get excited. So, so kind of, you know, by that. Um, but I think an interesting thing to discuss is the challenges because fundamentally what skills will people learn? Mm. And we've got really cool challenges this year. There's an OSINT challenge called Where in the World is Carmen Santa Ego? So, and it's based on that old <laughs> game. And you have to do some OSINT stuff. It's really, really fun. Um, we've got a Python programming challenge, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. It's a video game that you control via Python. Um, we have Kerberosting. So if you've never Kerberosted, 
you got to come to Holiday Hack Challenge because mm-hmm. you'll be able to Kerberos there and learn some new tips and tricks on that. We've got a uh, SSRF, Server-Side Request Forgery Challenge, which is a big thing we're finding in a lot of pen tests uh, related to cloud services. We got a great blind SQL injection challenge this year. Really neat. We've got a shell code construction mm-hmm. uh, challenge. Really neat the way the instrumentation of that works. And kind of our uh, piece de resistance is we've got uh, an FPGA challenge. So if you've never hmm. programmed and created an FPGA, you will. Uh, it's our final challenge this year. And and you'll submit the whole thing in Verilog. And there's some talks at KringleCon to help you learn Verilog and, and how you do this. And you'll submit the Verilog into a, uh, a system, and it will create for you a virtual FPGA chip. And you'll have to take that chip and you put it into something. And the reason you have to create the chip is the supply chain was not able to deliver the chip. So you're going to create your own using <laughs> oh. FPGA. And you'll put that into a special device, and then magic happens. So um, Or it doesn't, depending and on what, how... Ver- Verilog, depending on is Verilog like the programming language, if you will, for yeah, it's, 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 it's a description language, essentially, of how uh, FPGAs are going to work. And um, uh, we have a, a guy named Professor uh, Cordy Petabyte. He is one of Santa's elves. He's a professor, a very distinguished professor uh, at Elf University of the North Pole. He did a presentation and uh, challenge for us last year, and he wrote one for us this year. It's great to work with uh, Santa's own team. Um, anyway, he's got a presentation. It's only like 12 or 13 minutes long at KringleCon on FPGA programming and the basics of Verilog. And, and one of the, the big insights that uh, a Professor Petabyte brings up is when you're dealing with creating your own chips in FPGAs, um, everything runs in parallel. And you, you have mm-hmm. to think about that. Yeah. It is, it's kind of like you know massive parallel computing because you, you just put circuits in there and they're all running according to that clock. Now, obviously, you can nest them and, and, and make loops and such. He covers all of that. But theoretically, at a certain level, everything can happen at once and then get moved forward in the pipeline. And he covers all of that. Um, I learned a lot from his presentation and it's mm. kind of a, a fun and different way of thinking. It's not traditional code, but it's more of a description language. Mm. Anyway, I recommend you check it out. It's it's uh, the <clears throat> last objective in your badge. I want, I want to say it was like back in the day at ShmooCon, was it Hikari gave a presentation on FPGAs? Yes, and I practice. saw that. I was at that talk. Oh, yeah. I think we were at that talk together, quite frankly. I think we were. <laughs> yeah. yep. It was Hikari, yep. and he was using it to do password cracking, as I yeah. recall. Yeah, yeah, and Getting yeah. speeds at the time that were unthinkable. Right. Um, that was before a lot of the work uh, done with GPUs to do password cracking uh, came right. out, though. Yep. I, I wonder if it's easier to get an FPGA than it is an NVIDIA card today. Of course, most things, <laughs> wonder, most yeah. things are easier yeah, to get prob- than an NVIDIA probably, card today. Because uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to look for stuff that we haven't, that we think is valuable, interesting, and useful that we haven't seen in other CTFs. You know, SSRF. I haven't seen a lot of CTFs with SSRF. And SSRF or, is, memory serves me, uh, I can send a request to a, a web server and it will make another request to an internal web server or another website on the internet that's right and especially if it's cloud-based uh, forwarding something to another um cloud service uh provided mm-hmm. by the same organization right um and uh anyway it's kind of a beautiful challenge i think you'll like it um mm-hmm. and you know fpga we've never seen like i never have seen that used in a ctf before no, so not, it's it's kind of new stuff we're trying to push that on but you know last year a uh, professor petabyte did a thing on uh, blockchain technology, because as everybody knows, mm-hmm. the Naughty Nice list is based on blockchain. And uh, Jack was able to use some um, really bad pseudo random number uh, generation vulnerabilities, as well as hash collisions to be able to to fool the, the Naughty Nice uh, blockchain. So that was last year, we're trying to put blockchain in a CTF. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, FPGAs, SSRF, Kerberoasting, all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, I mean, Kerberoasting, it comes up in many of the internal network pen tests that we do. It, it's yep. just common these days. So if you're a defender, and certainly if you're an attacker, you need to know Kerberoasting and the various tools associated with that. I mean, Tim Dean was the, the guy that invented Kerberoasting. I know he's a friend of the show, yeah. your guy's friend, my friend. Um, so this is a bit of homage to uh, Mr. Medine. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite challenges that uh, that that I got to complete was, and very near and dear to my heart given you know the the release of uh, sec 556 the IoT hacking course um, was the the Wi-Fi yes. challenge which turned into an API interaction challenge like that's yes. components cool. that's components of the IoT ecosystem right there 
I was hoping you would bring it up. So so I'll, I'll go through the scenario. I don't want to reveal too much. Sure. But when you get to Jack Frost Tower, the door is frozen shut. And, and you can look in the windows. And when you look in the window, there is a round device like about this big. And it's got a circle in the center of it that is bright blue. Turns out it's a thermostat. And this, ther- I won't say the name of the vendor. I was going to say that. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the thermostat is Wi-Fi enabled, though. And you have to use the Wi-Fi dongle connected to your, your KringleCon badge to be able to join, find the access point, join the access point, get documentation about the API uh, associated with this IoT device, and then create and manip- create requests and manipulate that API, which is... And and it's it, it's fairly well guided. I actually mm-hmm. tweeted out last week, essentially kind of like the four steps you use to, to hack that one, because we want people to get inside a frost tower. Yeah. But you have to take the thermostat, turn up turn the, the heat, heat to melt the, and the yeah. door melt. Door. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. And then you can hop in. Yep. And you know, I, I thought that I had some uh, discussion uh, you know, outside of uh, Holiday Hack with one of the elves about how that whole thing went together. And uh, yes. I do believe the answer was no one should give me that amount of power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of IoT devices in earlier versions um, of Google wait, Home devices wait. were vulnerable to this, and they cleaned it up. But a lot of these IoT devices, many of us know, have APIs that if you're on the local network, if you can mm-hmm. hit them, they'll as long as you can enumerate that API and know what some of the calls are, it'll spit back information. And one of the ones on the Google Home that they have since fixed was you could query it for adjacent Bluetooth devices. Some of these have Bluetooth yes. chips that's built in <clears throat> mm-hmm. for your you know, home users to stream music to it, I would imagine. Sometimes don't have a Wi-Fi, but there was use cases for Bluetooth. But now I can see what other Bluetooth devices are in your home, provided I can query the API on your IoT device. Yep, yep. And we're trying to demonstrate that and kind of show the mm. power of doing that and the power of defending against it. So, um, so yeah, you get into Jack's Frost, Jack Frost Tower that way. It's awesome. Josh, you had a comment in there. I was just going to say, Larry, anybody that hands you power learns very quickly that they should not hand you that mm. amount of power. <laughs> yes. See, and it wasn't even Amen. me that was having the power handed to them. Like how that challenge was, uh, how that network was built was quite amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We, oh, a couple other things that we have in our challenges this year. There is a great Splunk challenge. The Splunk team did an awesome job with that. We also have a challenge uh, involving creating and manipulating some uh, Ducky script. You know, the mm-hmm. scripting language for the little rubber ducky mm-hmm. yep. um, malware delivery devices that was created by uh, Kevin Tires. Great guy. Sans instructor. Just really, really <clears> cool. <throat> so there's lots of cool, fun technologies to play with here. And one of the things that we really try to do is we try to mimic um, physical attacks like, you know, IoT via Wi-Fi when you're within range or rubber ducky stuff within our virtual world. So you can learn how you can apply these attacks as a pen tester in actual physical world. You know, we've been doing this for years. There was one that we did a couple of years ago where it was a key bidding challenge. You could actually see the physical key on Krampus's uh, key belt. Yep. And then once mm-hmm. you saw that key, we had a key grinding machine and you could virtually grind a key. This was in Holiday Hack 2019. You could virtually grind a key and, and then use it to unlock a door. Uh, Deviant Olaf helped us uh, with that one. So, so we're trying to, you know, do different and fun things each year, emphasizing the physicality of hacking where we can. Obviously, did you say, did you say Deviant Olaf? Olaf, he did. I was just going to say he Christmasized Deviant <laughs> Olam. <laughs> yeah. yes. Deviant's coming so, on the show next week, which is pretty. Oh, pretty that's fun. great! Yeah. Ask him how to pronounce his name. <laughs> we will. Deviant Olam. Um, that's how he spells his name. Ask him yeah, how he spells his name. But that's that, how but but what but what Ed's saying here is no. Ask him how you pronounce it, and he may say. Ask something him how different. you pronounce it. There is actually audio that you can play on the internet of him pronouncing his own name. But like like, like, like Linus Torvalds and how he pronounces Linux. Yes, exactly. Linux. Just I'm, because they're wrong doesn't mean that we have to listen. To them. <laughs> 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 Hey, if it's online, it's got to be right. If we can screw up That's pronunciation, right. we'll do it here on Security Weekly. Thankfully, Ed is here to keep us honest tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ed, it seems like you crammed a lot more into a space. It seems like I'm running into things more rapidly than in the past. Is that just me, or is it? Are you just like blew the top of how much you got in here? We there's a lot of stuff in there. I mean, the team was very clever and creative. You know, every year we're worried like do we have new ideas, but the ideas just flow. The team is so creative. I am really thankful 
for the incredible people that we get to work with, not only on the team itself, you know, the, the counterhack team, but our friends that develop challenges for us and with us, you know, like uh, the Splunk team, Dave Harold and, and the team over there at Splunk, um, Kevin Tires. Uh, the guy who did our blind SQL injection challenge is Josh Levine. Um, he is a student at a college called uh, the Sands Technology Institute, uh, Sands.edu, <laughs> huh. and uh, the kid's amazing. I shouldn't call him a kid. The guy is amazing, and uh, I asked him if he could create a challenge for us and asked him what he'd like to do, and he said blind SQL injection, code assisted. <clears throat> That's another cool thing about that oh, challenge, because oh. in pen testing, what? increasingly, we're getting code assisted pen tests, where they give you the source code, and they say do a pen test, so you can do it kind of hand in hand. It's not pure code review, but it's... It's being informed as you're doing the pen test with what the code is so you can help pinpoint flaws and pinpoint where fixes need to go more rapidly. It's a more efficient way of doing application and, and web app uh, pen testing. So we modeled that in Holiday Hack Challenge with a code-assisted blind SQL injection pen test. Make sense? Wait, yeah, so it does. describe the code-assisted? Code yeah, code-assisted pen testing. We're, we're increasingly getting that with our API stuff, with our web app stuff, with our IoT stuff, where they'll give us the code along with having us do a pen test. So that way, when we're doing the pen test, we can wow. look at the code for likely possibilities mm -hmm. and vulnerabilities, find those while we're doing the pen test, try to prove that we can weaponize an attack against that vulnerability by looking at the code. Now you might say, well, that's cheating. Yeah, but it's much more efficient, and I'm uh -huh. trying to save I my customers it. money while yep. at the yeah. same time making them more secure. Yep. And the best part of it is, once we found that vulnerability, show that we can exploit it, we can point in the code to say, this yeah. is where you fix it. Right. So, yep. so I would say about 80% of our web app or other app pen tests are code assisted these days. I love it, Ed. I think that's a, yeah. absolutely the right yeah. approach. This, this is this is your even better if you can show them the code that fixes it. I mean, you can't mm -hmm. do that all the time because of dependency. You can't do it all the time. You'd spend but, you know, you'd spend like you know hours or days trying to figure out all the dependencies and how to fix. But you could probably I mean, give much better advice on how to fix it if you have the code. Absolutely, you might want to do a show yeah. on that or a segment yeah. at least on code assisted pen testing because it's it's pretty hot and we wanted to have it in Holiday Hack Challenge this year. I mean, it's it's effectively it's an extension of white box testing. It's it's it you know, people are always like, oh, black box is really how hackers do it. Yeah, but do you want to pay me for the extra month and a half? Jo exactly, Josh. We refer exactly. to those. As I'm going to get you more secure, yeah. faster, and cheaper if we do code yeah. assist. And Josh, we refer uh, to those as uh, full knowledge pen tests as opposed and zero knowledge pen tests. Mm. There you go. Thank you so well, much. <laughs> um, why is everyone always trying to attack Santa? What? Why does Santa have so many enemies now? Well, look, it's tough to be the big guy. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's tough Santa, to be the boss, right? <laughs> it, yeah, you know, and Santa just means well. Um, but, you know, there's just a lot of people that, that want to mess up the holidays. There's a lot of nastiness out there in the world, you know? Um, mm -hmm. But Santa has, you know, 19,000 helpers around the world that, uh, that come to his aid every year. So thank goodness for that. Um, so on balance, I'd say, you know, the, uh, the good folks are winning with respect to Holiday Hack Challenge. That's awesome. May it always be so. And we are working on Holiday Hack Challenge 2022. As you know, it takes us more than a year to pull this thing off. So for the last month and a half, maybe two months, I've been working on HHC 2022. We got the storyline coming together. I've got four songs that I know that are going to be in it. Um, started to talk to the musicians about getting those songs written. No, but um, I think that I think that's important when we take take on projects, right? It the storyline has to come first. I think that's yes. very true when you develop a presentation, when you're yeah. working on a lot of different projects. I need the storyline. I mean, I'm teaching that to interns when they're about to write some code. I'm like, write out what you want to do in comments first, which is essentially the storyline for your program. Uh, that's right. I, I think yep. that's an important step that people often that, kind of gloss over, right? I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, that's, that's, that's very wise, Paul. And uh, um, Ron Bowes, who's a guy from my team. Yep, we know um, Ron. Whenever I, know Ron I do a presentation. Ron and yep, I, I worked in Tenable them. together. Ron does. Oh yeah, that's right. You mm. did. Yep. So Ron is great. And I always mention him whenever I present or talk. <clears throat> and uh, Ron said something very nice, uh, maybe two, three weeks ago, because I told him I'm working on 2022 storyline. And he said he, he really likes the fact that we get the storyline down first yep. so that then we can retrofit the technologies into it without it being forced and, and mm. weird. It's more of a natural flow. Mm. Um, and I, I really, I, I call Josh usually a week before holiday hack launch, Josh Wright, of course. 
uh, and say, hey, how's it going? He's like, I'm, he's sweating the details. I got to get this thing deployed. Chall- he's our challenge aficionado, the main challenge person, coordinates the creation of all the challenges. And I'll call him a week before launch saying, hey, do you want to hear the 2022 storyline? And he's like, <sighs> he gets annoyed with me. <laughs> no, I got to get this thing out the door. And I'm like, you sure you don't want to hear it? He's like, all right. <laughs> Tell me. This happens every year, like five <laughs> years in a row. I call them with the next year storyline before it. Because the thing of it is, we we all get so excited about the new storyline mm-hmm. that getting this one out the door is like, okay, we're almost there. Let's get it done. And then we'll move on. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And so like, what, what, what do you do next to make it even you more know, spectacular? I mean, I feel like what you've accomplished is so great. How do you, how do you continue to top you know, last year's challenge. The team is really amazing. I'm, I'm so thankful for them. Um, they do sweat the details. They really care. We're trying to produce the highest quality thing that we can and to really make it fun. Uh, I very often get asked, like right around launch time, people will say, well, how are you going to top this? And my answer is, enjoy this. Don't think about how we're going to top it. Yeah. That, that's that's mm. for us. And the truth is, I don't set out thinking, how can we top last year? Because that's that's scary and intimidating. I, I set out each year with the whole team to say, how can we do the very best job that we can? Mm-hmm. And how can we take what we learned last year and and build upon that? Um, so we're not setting out to top last year. We're just setting out to make the best thing that we can. But as we grow more wise, as as we learn things, um, if if the process goes well, we should do better. I do, you know, in the back of my mind, is I do worry like before launch, is this year as good as last year's? And, and I kind of, I, I sweat a little bit about that because I want it to be better, but that's at the end of the process. At the beginning of the process, we do not think, how can we beat last year? We think about how can we make it as, as good as we can? It's, it's a mindset thing, you know? Yeah. You sound like me when I, I coach the kids sports and stuff. I'm like, rule one, have fun. Rule yeah, two, do your best. That's all do I your best. You. Yes. Do your best. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like you focus on those too, two things, right? right? The good, What's that good line? Kick the knee. Sweep well, the leg. Yeah, I mean, the sweep the knee. Rule, sweep the knee. Third sweep rule the, is sweep the leg. Win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. No, I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about yourself. getting the narrative to your kids? Make sure you have the narrative down first before right. you cheat. Okay, I'm like, guys? you need to run fast. Run like you stole something. No, wait. Don't steal. But if you were, <laughs> think about how fast you'd run. <laughs> Hypothetically. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's it. so. Why um, the Google Cloud platform? Seems like you really have been liking that. I've done some similar stuff on AWS, sure. you know, with containers um, and stuff. But you seem to be having some yeah. good luck with GCP. We have. They are a sponsor uh, of the Holiday Hack Challenge. It's the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. So Sans mm. fundamentally underwrites the development of it. Um, but Google has helped us out. Uh, they provide us uh, some credits. Uh, so that we can run the stuff in their platform. Nice. You know, we like the other cloud platforms as well. And in yeah. fact, some but of the But you have a credit for Google's, which, which is important because it's expensive to run. And you don't have to pay to play this game, so you need to right. underwrite it somehow. Yeah. Yep, yep. They do help us out. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the elements of the game are in AWS. Mm-hmm. So we, we do have some elements there you'll find if you look carefully. Hey, they we've left the Google cloud and now we're in AWS. It, and that's good, you know. Multi-cloud platforms are a reality mm-hmm. that people face today. Right. But um, but Google has been a great sponsor to work with. They actually did a sponsored talk at KringleCon this year mm-hmm. as well, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, what was their sponsored so, to- topic of that talk, Ed? Uh, it is API uh, pen testing. Nice, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Sorry, Lee. Cool. Did you have a question? Oh, I was just thinking is before you got to the topic that they were doing a sponsored talk is how are you how are you keeping it so that we're not having to pay or there's not commercials on it? And obviously you've gotten sponsored talks and things, which is really nice. It's it's nice not to see some, you know, it, it's free, there's no ads, anything like that going on. Yeah, that's true. Um so you know, again, it's it's SANS. They they help a lot, but also, you know, our team, you know, I joke every year, but there's some truth to this joke. You know, we do pen testing uh, at CounterHack, and I, I'm very proud of the pen testing work that we do. Um, and I, I joke with my team saying, you know, all the stuff that we do, we build these ranges for SANS, Net Wars and Cyber City and stuff like that. And and we do all these pen tests year round, and we're learning on the pen tests so that we know what to put in Holiday Hack. So much of what's in Holiday Hack actually comes from pen tests that we did that year or incident response that we've done that year. So I say to the team in, in a very real way, 
Counterhack exists to create Holiday Hack Challenge. Mm. Everything else we do is to feed ourselves and our families so that we can create Holiday Hack Challenge. But let's not lose sight of what's important. It's the Holiday Hack Challenge that we give away for free. So I we I do a special session for Counterhack customers um, every year before Holiday Hack Challenge launches. And I say to those customers, thank you, because in some way you're helping to pay for Holiday Hack Challenge too. You're not a direct sponsor, mm -hmm. but by paying for pen tests with Counterhack, we give you the best price that we can, but you're helping to feed our families so that we can create this thing that your people can go through. And I tell them, and make sure you hire the people that win Holiday Hack Challenge. So we're doing that service for you as well. And right. some of your money is making it into this game so that people can excel at the game and then you can hire them. This is a value proposition, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. And, yeah. and so there, there are these challenges run all the time. And but there are distinct winners every year. So time frame, uh, Ed. I know we cover this every year. But I want to make people yeah. aware that like there, you so, will pick a winner, and but you can still play. Will. Yeah. So so yes, I'm so glad you brought that up. So I mentioned the Die Hard one, Holiday Hack 2018, mm -hmm. right? You can play that now. We leave it up all year and beyond. What we, we're doing now is we leave up the previous three years. I was going to so say, have yeah, like how far back do you want to maintain all of these? You know, challenges? we used to yeah. do them forever, mm -hmm. and 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 then my uh, my accounting team showed me how much money we were paying for yeah. stuff that four people per year would play. Right. It's like I, I can't spend thousands and thousands of dollars for four people to play Holiday Hack 2015. Mm -hmm. I love you, but, but can you it's, can you package okay. it? Can you package it so somebody can download it and run it like the try hack me banks and and or the hack me bank or whatever it is and things like that the infrastructure is vastly complex mm. you would oh, need sorry. a experienced sysadmin or sysadmins plural to, to run it and set it all up it's it's i would like to do that i wish we could but it's just so complicated so we made the call just looking at our data to say let's keep up the current year plus three years back mm -hmm. so you can play how to hack 2018 now 2019, 2020, but they're not competitive. All the answers are posted. Mm -hmm. So you can play those anytime just for fun and just for learning. The new one, Holiday Hack 2021, launches the second week of December and goes through, in a competitive sense, the first business Monday or Tuesday of 2022. I think it's uh, January 4th we're looking at. We'll keep it up after mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But if you want to win, you have to send us your answer and your write-up by January 4th. Does that make sense? Yep. <clears throat> Sweet. And where do people send that? Is that in the game or is it? It's in the game. Yep. Okay. In the game, you can submit it to us via a Google form um, or send us an email with your write-up. Write-ups are, are capped at 50 pages. Um, and notice that we are, I mean, it's kind of an interesting thing. It's not who gets through first. Mm -hmm. It's not who gets through most elegantly necessarily. It's who has the best write-up. So we're mm. really trying to emphasize that set of skills, which you often don't see in a CTF because it's very costly to judge who has the best write-up. But our team you know, steps up and we read everything that people submit to us, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of write-ups. I was gonna say, how many write-ups do you get in any given year, Ed? It's it's usually six or 700. Holy crap. And that's a 19,000 player. So not everybody, most people are playing to have fun. Yeah. Or even to try to get through it and learn, sure. right? But some people wanna win the SANS class. There's a SANS class for, mm -hmm. for the best write-up. Um, also notice this fun thing, the write-up the, the winning write-up becomes the official answer. What that mm. means is we don't have to write the official answer. Yeah. It's crap. <laughs> it's crap. Yeah. It's crap. The answer. We choose the right. official answer. Brilliant. And and does that person get credit in the write-up if they want to Lever, be Lever. recognized? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then John Strand usually offers him a job. That's that's the process. <laughs> is that, okay. I got you. I was, that was my next question. Is where to ultimately... And it's so it's one, one winner. There isn't like a... So we have a grand prize winner, and they mm -hmm. win a SANS class. We also have best creative answer that is technically correct, mm -hmm. and best technical answer that might not have all the bling and everything necessary to be grand prize winner. Right. I um, we also have uh, seven random draws, uh, just so that people will submit, even if they're not complete, we'll randomly draw you, and uh, you could win a, a t-shirt or some swag from KringleCon. I gotcha. I got you. We also have, we, we launched this last year and people loved it. We did it again this year. If you make it all the way. So there's this Kringle Con conference and there's a swag booth there. And then at Frost Fest, uh, Jack Frost has a gift shop that you can buy swag on the way out. Um, if you win the game, you are given a URL um, 
so that you can buy something that says that you've won the game. Mm. So, and, and people seem to really like that last year. Yeah, it's bragging rights. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's bragging rights. And now you still have to buy it. We can't give it to you for free because you, so we set a goal for ourselves and we've accomplished this goal for the last like five years in a row. We want two to 3% of players to make it all the way through. Yeah. That's what, we, we don't want it to be impossibly hard. But mm-hmm. We don't want it to be too easy. Right. And I think last year we were at like 2.83% of people completed the whole thing. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. It's right on our goal. How do you gauge difficulty level? Because, I mean, yourself, obviously, and much of your staff are very senior security people. Most of you are instructors. You've got a high degree of technical expertise and knowledge on your team. So how do you gauge how easy or difficult it's going to be for varying skill sets? It's very, very hard to do. So let's just mm. recognize that. Up yes, front. it's I, hard I, to I, know, right? Yeah. And then somebody, might, we might think something's hard, but there's an easy bypass. People figure out, and it's like, oops, we screwed that up. Mm-hmm. Or we think something's easy, but people have trouble. They don't know this thing or that thing that we think that they should. That said, we have a very good track record on our team because we've all been developing challenges for 10 to 15 to 20 years and then interacting with students in a classroom environment to see what's easy for them and hard for them. The other thing that we do is when one of our people creates a challenge, like say Chris Davis or Chris Elgie or Josh Wright or Ron Bose creates a challenge, all the rest of the team tests that challenge and applies their knowledge to determine whether we think it's easy or hard. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have the Christmas tree rating. So one Christmas tree is our easiest challenges. Two is harder. Three is harder. Four is harder. Five is harder. And we're adjusting as we're testing the game. You know, we had one challenge we thought would be a four Christmas tree challenge. We bumped it up to five. Mm -hmm. We had another one we thought was going to be five. We bumped it down to four. So we're doing that. And then after the, the whole game runs for a month or so, we do a plot to show how many users have conquered each of our challenges. There's usually 12 or so main objectives, maybe 11, maybe 13. And what we're looking for is a smooth decrease in the number of people that complete each challenge. Mm -hmm. Because that means we were about right in our Christmas tree difficulty assignments and stuff, challenge one through 12. If we see like a major drop somewhere, or even like there's a drop and then it bumps back up, that means that challenge wasn't in the right place Mm -hmm. and we have to correlate and figure out what happened there. But I'm I'm really proud to say our team really does have a pretty smooth decrease in the number of people that successfully complete each challenge from challenge one up to challenge 12. It's, it's, we actually, we do a webcast. You you log, you log uh, uh, which users have completed it. And you're using log4j for that logging. Of course we are. Of course. Doesn't everybody use that for everything? <laughs> yeah. Of course. But we, but we we do log it. We log. It's unbelievable mm-hmm. what we freaking log. You talk to an elf, we know. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, look. Yeah. He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. You you click on this. You click on that. Everything for every user we we observe and record so we can do analysis afterwards to say what was the user experience like mm-hmm. how did they interact with challenges how can we smooth that out how can we make it better and we do a webcast mm-hmm. late january every year and the webcast is where we announce the winners mm-hmm. but we also go through various stats and we show that plot of how the challenges were done and we do it via a uh, youtube um webcast mm-hmm. so it's the, the previous it's year's free, ones yeah. are posted up there so nice yeah so so with 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 all the with all the write ups you're reading and all the work you're doing mm-hmm. making the challenges and not only making challenges but challenges at the appropriate level of difficulty, yeah, it seems like it's ripe for a couple of really awesome training or class type events. Have you ever gone there? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Well, people people go there on our behalf. Actually, there are high schools uh, around the world uh, that'll take a week off before Christmas of their studies and they play holiday hack challenge together. Uh, there's, uh, computer clubs at colleges where they'll do this as well. Um, and then there's companies where they'll spend a day or so within the company, you know, before the holidays, just playing holiday hack challenge. So people are using this, um, in their, their sort of curricula, if you will. Um, and we love that, you know, every year I get questions from people saying, can we play in teams? Yes. What's the limit on team size? I don't care. If you want to have 30 people playing together in a team, 100 people, it doesn't matter to us. Because in the, you'll say, how is that a competition? It's all about the write-up, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. um, if you have 100 people and you get through in four hours, hey, that's great. You know, that's fine. Um, if you have one person and you get through in f- you know 400 hours, hey, that's fine too, you know? Um, it's the learning platform and the fun and, and the, the social thing that we're looking for. 
Ed, what are the what are the rules of what people should not do, right? Because you, you're pretty don't break lean, our stuff. Don't break your stuff. Is that, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're pretty lenient on like teams and you know, yeah, to, and everything is fair. But like, other than like, don't hack our stuff. Are there really any other kind of rules? Don't break our stuff. Don't post answers before the closing deadline, January fourth. Yep. Okay, you can go into Discord and help other users. Sure. We're fine with that. That's not cheating. We don't care. Um, but just don't post your answers mm. uh, because if you do, somebody might steal your answers and do a better write-up than you did. Right. right? So, yeah. so we do try to say don't post answers until after January 4th. After January 4th, post all your answers. Talk mm -hmm. about it. And we do have a Discord uh, channel mm -hmm. so you can go in and talk with people right now and share ideas and share solutions. We don't want you to just tell them how to do it, though. Yeah. But you can share your techniques. So really those – oh, there's another really big rule, really big. Okay, so so don't break our stuff. Don't post your answers early. Be kind to one another. Mm -hmm. I think that was Bill and Ted. Um, yeah, we th this is the holiday hack challenge. We want to be family friendly. We um, we're very careful when we write these things to not put anything that's offensive in it, um, you know, or or cuts anybody down or anything like that. So you you have to be you know family friendly. We don't want people to say really terrible things, you know, in the in-game chat, you know, um, we have filters on the various names uh, that people can use for their mm -hmm. characters. So they can't put stuff that's offensive, either say, um, you know, from a gender perspective or from a racial perspective or political perspective or anything that somebody might take offense at. That is not a challenge to say, can you evade our filters? <laughs> that's not Please part of the that. challenge. Not part no. of the challenge. But we we do want to have a family friendly environment. Little kids do play this game. Yeah. Now we do occasionally have people who are bad and and they say nasty stuff. And we have a we have a group uh, we call the Kringle Concierges, and mm -hmm. they they help users not from a technical perspective, but just within the game if they need to learn the game dynamics. And the Kringle Concierges are also empowered to mute players who may say things that are offensive and such. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because we want to keep a, a nice, friendly environment. Mm. That's that's really vital. So those are really the three rules. Don't break our stuff. Don't post your answers early. And don't be a jerk. Mm. Be kind to each other. You'll shoot, you shoot, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. That's right. Okay. Exactly. The, only, so, the only prerequisite to playing the game is desire. You don't have to be as tall as Goofy's hand or any of that. You just right. yep. log in and go and... and have and we try to, we try to write it so that all you need really is a browser. From a tool perspective, mm. everything else is in-game. Um, now, if you have your own tools and want to download assets and analyze them locally, you certainly can do that, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And we're also really careful to make sure that the game runs within technology that is widely distributed and, and very affordable. We want people around the world, of, mm -hmm. regardless of economic status, to be able to play this with you know computers that might be three or five or seven years old and it still functions within their browser you know people ask us all the time hey is there going to be like you know augmented reality or maybe metaverse kind of things in holiday hack we're moving in that direction but the concern is what is the hardware cost because we yeah. don't want to cater to just a rich clientele or clientele in certain you know rich and powerful countries we want people around the world to be able to do this we're even sensitive about stuff like callbacks not everybody can listen on a port on the internet for an inbound shell coming back. They they can't because right. they don't have you know an ISP that supports that, or they're you know from a from a high school or something where they're blocking that. So if if we have any reverse shells, which we do in the game, they're always callbacks to something else in the game in the we game. give you access to. Um, mm -hmm. Or years ago, Holiday Hack 2014, we um, had to have you call a, a number. It was voice over IP, so you'd have to call a yeah. number. Now, not everybody can actually call a phone number mm -hmm. worldwide. It's in some places just too expensive. So we set up a VoIP service so people could go to that and then dial from within our game up to another I thing. I remember that. Mm. Yeah, we, we really want to make things accessible um, to people of various <clears throat> economic means. But also, you know, we try to we think through, you know, people who might be colorblind. Um, we launched a challenge last year where people who are colorblind, it was a little more difficult for them. So we went into the game like a day after launch when people pointed this out to us, and we added some special logos to the light bulbs. It was You have to put the certain light bulbs of certain colors in certain order mm -hmm. uh, to make the Santa Vader work. And we put little logos on them, so even if you couldn't see the color, it was still another indication mm -hmm. of the differences between bulbs. Um, 
So we think about people who might be deaf and, and, you know, how do they play the game? And are there things that we can do to make sure their experience is solid and comparable? Um, so I, I'm very proud of the team, too, because they do sweat those details and think about it. I'm not saying we're perfect, but we're learning. And, uh, you know, if people find stuff that we could do better, we're all ears and we try to take those lessons and apply them, you know, in subsequent years. Yeah, because obviously being in a virtual reality or Oculus kind of setting would be really awesome as like a next level. But Oculus is like a few hundred bucks at least. You'd, exactly. But you'd, you'd have, you know, I, I can I can hear the wheels turning now that Ed's going to have a, an in-browser Oculus. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, right. Would that would be that cool. would be so cool? Yes. <clears throat> and and of course, Ed, as I'm sitting here thinking, like you're already working on the themes for next year. Like, wouldn't it be cool if you could put on that in browser environment, uh, Oculus immersive environment, and have it take you back to like hacking in the 1980s, mm. wow. where you have to Retro. wire, where you have to wire a serial port and learn Hayes AT command set. Oh my and, gosh, ATDT. Yes, uh -huh. how about that? Mm -hmm. Oh god, that's actually Copy been con. that's actually been my <laughs> life this week, which is kind of terrifying. But, yeah, um, wow. Yeah. I that's had cool. I had another spin on that, Larry. Yeah. How about who's got the oldest, crappiest computer that actually can play the game? <laughs> oh, Pip McGee's closet. Here we go. That, mm -hmm. Like like this that Lee that reminds yeah. me of the uh, the Hackaday Challenge, where one of their things was you. What what device can you put on the internet to browse to the Hackaday website? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Commodore sixty four, VIC twenty. Yep. You got five K of RAM. C C P eleven. Yep. Now of PDP course, eleven, baby. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, why not? PDP eleven connected to like ThickNet to other some other system that you could connect to this that dials out via modem and serial port. And, Is this what yeah. it's like conversing with your team, Ed, about what to put in the game? <laughs> like, I can imagine some very creative conversations happening. Oh, there's great creative conversations. We do try to come back to what is practical and useful. Though mm, yeah. <laughs> there's that little filter that comes up. Um, yeah, you know the the one well, thing that has been mentioned. I got to I got to say this, Ed. The one thing that has been mentioned is something that you'd said, which is that there's a URL that you give to the winners to get their T-shirts, so they can have yeah. street cred. Honestly, yeah. all you need to do is discover the URL. So doing some subdomain enumeration and life is good. So yes. I'm just pointing it, that out. You know? It's true, and and look, I do realize that can be leaked, but my response to that is, if if you get that without actually winning the game and you buy your stuff, you and I both know you will feel ashamed mm. to wear it mm. for the rest of your life. Now, some people, that's still okay. They'll still wear it. But but you know and I know that you, and, and you Santa, won't feel And, and Santa it. may put coal in your stocking. Yes. It's true. It's true. <laughs> so, But yeah, that URL, we give to all the winners. And some of the winners could share it with non-winners. Hey, that's it, it's it's understood. It's understood. I think we call that a poser. That's a, that'd be <laughs> a poser. That's wow. correct. Wow, I saw I saw I saw Lee dig something out of Fibber McGee's closet over there. That looks like a wow. uh, a netbook EEPC. Yeah, pretty oh, much. Wow. Oh God! Yep. Look at that. Um, yeah, I was actually had a problem with my Christmas light display, and I was having to move to a computer because the, the director was broken. I was going to try and use this. Unfortunately, it's not working right. Oh bummer! It's almost working it, right. I, 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 it the, never Lee, right. I can tell you that's a that's a really interesting PH computer. PH. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, DH. Because if you turn the HP logo upside down, it's what DH computer. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. It Don't make like Larry dig out his seven-inch okay. network. Oh, it's running Intel Atom processor, and Windows yeah. Seven Pro. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I think I think I just recycled a bunch of those. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, sorry, uh, sorry, Ed. You were saying yeah. So, so I would like to encourage you guys all to play. I know Larry's played a little bit, um, but please, you know, hop into the game. And of course, all your viewers and, and listeners, holidayhackchallenge.com, you can get there that way, or sans.org slash holidayhack. Really, just, just give it a few minutes. It'll make me happy, at least, and I think it'll make you happy. Um, but just have fun with it. We're not asking for an hour or 10 hours, unless you want, but just, just hop around in there. You might see a friend. You might see me running around in the game. I do that from time to time, uh, fully clothed. I've, um, I've never yet so. seen Ed Scotus in game. I've seen some of uh, Ed's other... Uh, uh, elves, holiday hack yes. challenge elves, but I've never seen it. They're all we're all hopping around from time to time. Yep, I sometimes will stand by the North Pole. Oh, Larry, I got to ask you: Did you hear the music shift on either side of the North Pole? Yes, <laughs> isn't that fun? I was like, "Whoa, what just happened?" Oh, 
<laughs> and I wanted two songs that sounded so different. So there's Santa Claus's side of the North Pole, and then there's Jack Frost's side of the North Pole. And when you cross that line, the music completely changes. Yep. See, and I, I didn't even really catch that there were the two towers. I, I kind of you know, missed that a little bit. And I'm like, you, you know, hackers, right? You got to explore all the places. Like, what's down this dark hallway? And I'm like, huh, it doesn't look like there's a border here. What happens if I keep... Oh, <laughs> wait, there's something else over here. <laughs> look at this giant tower. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the two towers. How about that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. What's, the, what's the line in Star Wars? You, you bring with you what you, you take in. You go in with what you have. When he... Yoda. Has yeah, that was Bob Dylan. Oh, Wasn't yeah. it Bob Dylan? <laughs> and how do people find the holiday hack challenge for 2021 sans.org slash holiday hack fantastic i'm registered i'm at the gates so yay talk and to the don't, elf. don't worry talk it already you. knows that's right yeah, <laughs> they log everything to you. it's like oh i see you logged in awesome uh, ed yay. thank you so much for appearing on paul security weekly you guys are a joy thank you for all that you do happy holidays um, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, to let us share some ideas. Fantastic. Our Everyone, please go do the Holiday Hack Challenge. Coming up next is Sanan from Barracuda Network. Stay tuned.